Oh, oh, oh my god! Bring water, cold wash glove, pillow, fire out! Figures I fell asleep on Christmas and I wake up and all my childhood toys have come to life and been rebooted by Michael Bay! Hi! If you will just sit down and calm yourself. Well, it's easy for you to say you didn't wake up next to a giant talking rat! <sighs> okay, then what's this about? Where did you guys all come from? I will tell you where we came from. You know what, forget I ask. There's no time for some long-winded backstory, Mickey Mouse. Because this is movie night! Hello and welcome to movie night! In-depth film reviews in five minutes or less. I'm your host, Jonathan Paula. Let me be among the last to wish you a Merry Christmas, and among the first to wish you a Happy New Year. The massive Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles franchise has included comics, animated kid shows, action figures, Halloween costumes, and of course five feature films. Tonight we'll be reviewing three of them, one from each phase of the series, beginning with the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The first of five features based on the ridiculously successful comic book and cartoon franchise of the same name. This live action animated film was produced on a budget of 13 million and released on March 30th, 1990. As weird as it all is, the well-paced movie managed to gross over 200 million, making it the second highest grossing independent film of all time. The 93 minute story focuses on the titular crime fighters, a quartet of mutated humanoid turtles named after classic renaissance artists who clash with a gang of nefarious ninjas, all while being mentored by a giant talking rat. Relegating the bizarre and unbelievable origin story for the occasional flashback were never properly introduced to the heroes in a half shell in any adequate capacity. The cartoon show I grew up watching as a kid, and absolutely adored, smartly includes quick lines of exposition in its theme song, giving each turtle their own personality. Sadly, this PG-rated picture shares none of that, leaving the uninitiated forced to follow these characters as a group entity, rather than separate individuals with their own different characteristics. Thankfully though, there probably wasn't a single boy on the planet who wasn't already familiar with this fearsome foursome, who were voiced by Josh Pais, Brian Tochi, Robbie Rist, and Corey Feldman with plenty of attitude. Although I did find Pius's really thick New York accent to be a bit distracting. A Jose can say go back! When an invading enemy breaks through their window, Rist playfully quips, Boy, and I thought insurance salesmen were pushy. The pizza-loving reptiles portrayed by regular-sized men in unsightly rubber suits are often more obnoxious than they are amusing. A scene where the group sits around eating pizza and dishes out impressions of old movies is pretty fun, however. In supporting roles, Judith Howog is redeemable as a go-getting journalist, Elias Katow is a hockey-obsessed ally, a young Sam Rockwell is featured as a gang leader, and James Saitel portrays an uncompromising but poorly motivated villain. Director Steve Barron doesn't really impress with the traditional techniques used to make this picture, but at least the shots last long enough to tell who's kicking who in the martial arts sequences. I'd like to invite you all in, but, uh, I really don't have anything to offer you guys except for, a uh, frozen pizza. Let's go for it! You said the magic word! You guys eat pizza? Doesn't, Doesn't everybody? everybody? Yeah, well, um... All right, um... Hey! Did she say pizza? So you live in an antique store? Yep, pizza! Well, mm. Above, actually. Uh, what do you guys like on your pizza? Oh, just the regular stuff. Flies, stink bugs. It was, it was a joke. <laughs> the score from John Dupress is a subtle and somber effort, occasionally stepping aside for more boisterous hip-hop inspired tunes. Besides the aforementioned costumes, the set design and visuals here actually work rather well, most of the action taking place in New York's dark underworld. Although the sequels would go in a much lighter direction, this initial entry is a reasonably faithful adaptation of the source material, and a pretty good time for fans of the series. For everyone else, it's honestly nothing special, and something only worth rewatching for nostalgia's sake. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles may be a curious experience, but it's still pretty amusing. And here's what you had to say about it in the YouTube comments. Praising its nostalgic fan service quality, you thought this is a cool film. Had you asked me my thoughts on this movie 20 years ago, I would have told you a different story. But today, it honestly doesn't hold up as well. I thought it was far too serious for the concept, and only an alright picture. For tonight's poll question, who is your favorite Ninja Turtle? An easy one for me, I've always been partial to Michelangelo myself. But leave your response as a comment below. Next up, the 2007 version, simply titled TMNT. 
Released in March of 2007, this computer-animated action fantasy film was the first Turtles feature released in 14 years, and the fourth in the franchise overall. The $34 million production all but tripled its budget under the direction of writer and director Kevin Monroe. Seemingly functioning as a spiritual successor to the story of the previous trilogy, this 87-minute narrative reintroduces us to the Turtles, who have since grown apart and taken up various day jobs. When a mysterious ancient evil threatens New York, they must put aside these differences and defeat it. It's this contentious interplay between them, especially Leo and Raphael, that make this particular story more compelling than previous outings which includes a centerpiece battle where they violently face off against each other. As for the rest of the story, it certainly could have been simplified. TMNT opens with a drawn-out, expositional heavy flashback that has a very, but wait, there's more, quality to it, as narrator Lawrence Fishburne continually expands on the already involved backstory. Once the picture settles in, though, it's supported by tremendous voice acting, which includes the talents of Nolan North, James Arnold Taylor, Mikey Kelly, Mitchell Whitfield, Sarah Michelle Gellar, Chris Evans, Patrick Stewart, and Japanese actor Mako appearing in his final film. The characters smartly retain a good deal of their humor as well, with Donnie reminding his brother after a poorly timed joke, Mikey, remember our talk? Evans and North share some of the film's stronger emotional moments, which help keep the film from becoming too goofy or cartoony, but involving the April O'Neil character in the fighting sequences is a curious and unnecessary decision. It makes no sense for the news reporter to pick up a weapon and start fighting bad guys. What do you say, fearless leader? I say we stop talking! <laughs> <laughs> We're getting off on the wrong foot here. We're trying to help you. Never. Yeah, wait! The Shredder's dead! Who are you working for? I wasn't sure how I'd react to an all-computerized version of this classic franchise, but it was the animated TV show that rocketed them to popularity originally, and so this updated version of that iconic look is a welcome change of pace from the uncomfortable-looking live-action features of the early 90s. Indeed, the visual style here is clean and sharp, making excellent use of conventional camera techniques and a colorful and vibrant universe. Monroe's treatment of harsh shadows, slow dolly moves, and backlighting is particularly appealing. Klaus Baldet's score fits the PG-rated film well, in that it never distracts, but it doesn't exactly stand out, either. For fans of this series, this is an amusing and well-paced adventure that preaches the importance of brotherhood, and is worth watching at least once. Despite its quieter reputation amongst the series, I'd argue that this picture is the strongest of all five Turtle films, which maintains a fun blend of action and humor consistent with the mythos of these characters. But that's just my opinion. Here are some of yours from the YouTube comments. With no one rating this lower than a 3 or higher than an 8, you felt very strongly that this was an alright film. Perhaps because it felt closer to what I grew up watching as a kid, I enjoyed this one enough to score it a good. Last up tonight, another film titled Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. A reboot of the Turtles franchise, this $125 million action sci-fi comedy film was unsurprisingly a huge hit at the box office, taking home nearly half a billion in ticket sales following its August 8, 2014 release. Although the credits list Jonathan Liebsman as the director, Producer Michael Bay's fingerprints are all over this film. The scope, actors, set design, cinematography, and music all feel identical to his Transformers series, for better or worse. The fast-paced 101-minute story follows Megan Fox as an eager, low-level New York TV reporter who uncovers the existence of the titular heroes as they embark on a mission to save the city from an evil kingpin. As many of the in-movie characters are quick to point out, Fox makes for great eye candy, but she's commendably much stronger as the lead here than her forgettable performance in the aforementioned Transformers series. Plus, having a relatable and ambitious protagonist helps anchor some of the absurdities on screen. Speaking of which, the eight-foot-tall heroes in a half shell are portrayed by some convincing motion capture work and voiced by Alan Rich Nolan Fisher, Johnny Knoxville, and Jeremy Howard. Although their updated design is a distant departure from their iconic look, far grittier and cluttered than necessary. Thankfully though, their personalities still shine through, with Donnie even given a pair of glasses to really drive home his intelligent demeanor. It's a lazy writing trick, but it still works. Tony Shalhoub provides the voice of their sensei master, who reminds his pupils in a colorful opening montage that they're bound for greatness. In supporting roles, Will Arnett is wonderful as a horny news colleague who provides some decent comic relief. William Fickner is fantastic as an unscrupulous bad guy, while Whoopi Goldberg is the hard-nosed news producer. Although the plot takes some interesting liberties regarding the source material's origin story, the changes actually make for a more involved and effective dynamic between our characters. 
The turtles are no longer the result of a random accident, but Fox's old pets, whom she deliberately saved following an act of corporate sabotage. You told me to come here. I didn't bring anyone with me, I did exactly what! Okay, are you April O'Neil? Initiating retinal scan. Scanning, 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 scan complete. It's her! It's her! Guys, of it's her! Of course it's her, Donnie. Hey! Really? Glad you could make it. Hey, there's someone important we want to introduce you to, but first... Oh, yeah. Welcome to my crib, girl. Where are we? Yeah, it's our Fortress of Solitude. Our Hogwarts. Our Xavier Academy. <laughs> Next generation, state of the art Wonderdome. Oh, are we in the sewer? No. Technically, yes. Yeah, yeah, it's the sewer. Despite initial rumors that the turtles would actually be aliens, Leavesman smartly keeps their bizarre story firmly planted in the mutagen home. Regardless of their updated appearance or backstory, though, they still feel like the Ninja Turtles we all know and love. When they speed off in their souped-up turtle van, Michelangelo can't resist blasting So Happy Together, the upbeat pop song from the 60s by, who else? The Turtles. A later scene perfectly illustrates the charm and playfulness of the group, when Mikey busts out an impromptu beatboxing session in an elevator, moments before returning to the battle. Although the sequences rarely follow any real-world logic or physics, the action here is well-executed and particularly fun especially an extended slide down an icy mountainside that sees all four turtles working in unison to save an 18-wheeler before it careens off a cliff. While the visual effects effortlessly blend all of this mocap stuff with the real environments together, it's the dynamic and free-floating camera moves that provide some of the coolest imagery. Woven throughout is a great score from Ryan Tyler that lends an epic scale to an otherwise one-dimensional narrative. Being obsessed with these characters and concepts as a kid, I honestly did not expect to enjoy this newest incarnation. But the PG-13 rated picture does a fine job of capturing the spirit and humor of the Turtles in a modern and exciting action adventure. It has plenty of flaws, especially with its clunky script, but a follow-up picture in 2016 no longer seems like an awful idea. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is fast and exciting fun, even if these aren't the same Turtles we grew up with. And here's what you had to say about the movie in the YouTube comments. Mixed, but mostly negative comments here, with many criticizing the character development and story. You scored this a 4. Impressed is definitely too strong a word, but I definitely enjoy this one more than I thought I would. It doesn't always feel like a proper Turtles experience, but when it does, it works well. I thought it was good. Finally tonight, let's see what you're saying about films currently playing in theaters, with some of your tweet critiques. If you see a new movie in theaters, tweet your review with the JPMN hashtag. Next week, I'll be counting down my top 10 picks for the best movies of 2014. So please stay tuned for that special episode in the new year. In the meantime, please check the links on the right if you'd like to watch more movie night reviews, or click subscribe to be notified of future uploads. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, Instagram, or Letterboxd for updates between episodes. Once again, my name is Jonathan Paula. Thank you for watching and listening. Until next time, have a happy new year and a good movie night.